is there any real value to um, near far exercises, you know, so-called pencil push-ups or uh, smooth pursuit tracking? I've talked a little bit about it before on the podcast, but that was, you know, some time ago. So uh, what are your thoughts on on that? Uh, is there any value whatsoever? I mean, they, they require a little bit of work, just like going to the gym, but, you know, you know, 25 reps a day of near far, um, especially as one is transitioning from age 30 to age 50. Um, is it worthwhile? Yeah. Is it harmful in any way? Definitely not harmful. And again, uh, you know, would it slow down or sort of um, uh, slow down your progression to presbyopia or needing those reading glasses? Uh, could be. Some people also develop um, sort of, uh, you know, a real failure to properly turn their eyes in. And so they actually would benefit if you've been diagnosed with that inability, you're having double vision at near, but not at distance. Um, so that kind of convergence insufficiency, for example, uh, then, then pencil pushups often get prescribed as a way to try to exercise those skills in, you know, uh, in your eye muscles. Um, I should interrupt here and just tell people, for those of you that are listening, not watching the pencil pushup, uh, we can put a, a link to it uh, in the show note captions, but it's essentially taking a pen or a pencil, looking at it at um, at arm's distance, and then uh, slowly moving it toward your nose and uh, deliberately working hard. And it is a bit of effort to continue to focus on it at a close distance. At some point, it will become blurry because I can't cross my eyes any further um, unless I become a cyclops. And then moving it back out again and doing that for you know ten to twenty five repetitions, maybe once or twice a day, a few times a week. Um, th that's what those are pencil push-ups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you're certainly not going to hurt anything. There are other situations where those really do get prescribed, and there's definitely some good clinical trial data suggesting that they can actually help. For example, recovery from concussion. Hmm. A lot of people actually, one of the really telling ways to diagnose concussion and this can be concussion from sports or a fall or, you know, any, any source of concussion. Uh, your smooth pursuit, which is the ability, let's say I've got a dot moving around in a circle on a screen, and I'm following that dot with my eyes. My eyes should be able to very smoothly follow that circle around. Uh, it's the lit up hockey the eyes. puck on one watching a hockey game. Is that... Like You're that, a hockey fan, right? like yeah, that, exactly. uh, you know, yeah. just following yeah. a ball, you know, yeah. following any movement mm -hmm. with smooth pursuits mm -hmm. of your eyes. And after concussion, that actually those systems in our brain, the sort of reflexive ability to properly follow that, use that visual input to tell your eye muscles exactly where to move gets disrupted. And so all of a sudden your smooth pursuit starts to look choppy. It's not so smooth anymore. And it's actually a way to diagnose and follow recovery from concussion. Mm -hmm. And part of the visual rehab, sort of neuro rehab, one of the approaches being used and, and further studied still in recovery from concussion is actually doing those kinds of exercises like pencil push-ups or basically what you've described is focusing from far away to focusing near and doing that back and forth and using that to sort of like help regain uh, the uh, tighter control of our eye movements and that eye-brain connection. 